A common challenge in web design and network architecture is grouping a number of web services in a single host or behind a single IP address. This is especially common with IPv4 due to address scarcity. The usual solution to this is to use a reverse proxy or a load balancer. Essentially what this does is it takes in sessions from clients and dispatches them to the appropriate server to handle the request based on the URL or the domain name. In this video, I'm going to explore the differences between layer 4 and layer 7 reverse proxies and load balancers and how I'm using one in my network to go from a single IPv4 address to a bunch of IPv6 web servers. So come along on this adventure. So to understand how reverse proxies and load balancers sit in our normal web path, let's take a look at how a normal web session looks. So over here we have a client and we have a server. The client first establishes a TCP socket. So TCP, you've probably heard of it, it essentially creates a long-lived session over short-lived IP sockets. So IP internet protocol lets us send packets across the internet that are fully routed, but each packet is an individual piece of data. It doesn't group together. So TCP groups them into strings of bytes that we can keep running for minutes or even hours and send data across the stream. And it'll organize them, put them all back together in order for us. So then on top of TCP, we establish a TLS socket, which is in yellow here. So TLS is transport layer security. So once we have a TCP socket established, we can send bytes. The client sends a client hello. The server sends back a certificate. The two are able to exchange keys and start an encrypted session. So within that encrypted session, we can then have our actual data traffic. So here the client says git index.html http 1.1. My server responds 418, I'm a teapot. So in HTTP 1.1, client sends requests, server sends response. Client sends request, server send response. The client can keep sending requests over and over as soon as the response is finished. So it can keep that TCP TLS session open for a long time and use it to send request after request after request. With HTTP 2, you can send more than one request, but you have to get the responses back in order. And then with HTTP 3 over UDP over quick, that's a totally different thing. It's not gonna be talked about in this video. So TCP is considered a layer four protocol. It's on top of layer three internet protocol. And um, so if we're intercepting the TCP socket, that would make us a layer four load balancer or proxy. And TLS is considered a layer seven protocol. So if we're intercepting TLS, that would make us a layer seven proxy. So here's an example of what it looks like with layer four load balancer. So the client here sends a TCP socket to the load balancer. Then it starts sending a TLS socket. And part of that is the client hello. And the client hello includes the SNI header, which might be like www.apple.net. It's not the full URL, it's just the domain name. So from there, the load balancer has enough information to know what backend it needs to go to. And it then opens its own TCP socket to the backend and then passes on through the client hello. So because the layer four load balancer has stitched together these two TCP sockets, the client and server can then do their normal TLS exchange through the stitched together TCP socket without knowing anyone's in the middle. And the load balancer can't inspect the traffic. All it can see is that client hello, which is then unencrypted. And the client hello just has the server name identifier, SNI, which is the domain name they're going to. Not the full URL, just the domain name. So this is a really effective way of taking a single address and splitting it out into more than one server. This is what I'm using in this video. But there's another approach, layer seven. So in the layer seven reverse proxy, the reverse proxy terminates the TCP socket, receives the client hello, and then it does a TLS handshake with the client. So the reverse proxy has to have the TLS certificate for that domain or be able to issue one on its own. So then the client can send its HTTP request saying, I would like this address. The proxy has the option to rewrite that and send it to a backend, answer it directly with a 404 or something like that. So it has a lot more flexibility in what it can do. But ultimately, it's taking this TCP socket and this TLS socket determining where to route the request and sending it to a backend. Because if it was not sending it to a backend, it would be a web server, not a proxy. So another quirk of this system, and the reason I chose not to use a layer seven reverse proxy, is because the reverse proxy is terminating the TLS session. So because we're terminating the TLS session, we need the valid server side certificates for the domain. So if I have a web server out somewhere that I can access directly over IPv6, and I'm only using my proxy to hide all of my addresses behind one IPv4 address, because in IPv6, I can give them all their own IPv6 address, it's not a problem. I can have a bunch of servers all over my network, each of them has their own v6 address. I can talk directly to them over the internet, all's good. But I only have one IPv4, so that comes in, hits the layer four proxy and gets split out. If I were to use a layer seven proxy, I'd have to have my TLS certificates 
both on the origin web server, because that's doing TLS going out to IPv6 clients, and also on the reverse proxy, which is doing TLS going out to v4 clients. And I don't really want to keep my certificates in two places at once. It's a little more complicated, especially with automated cert renewals and stuff like that. So I'm just not going to do that. Uh, another thing you'll learn that this is that we have the option of not securing traffic back to the origin server. So here, TLS is optional on this side. So if you're running this on a secured network or an internal network between a small number of computers or on a single computer, you could skip out on TLS from the reverse proxy to the back end. And this is a really common setup when you have large clusters that are scaling to high levels. Because just doing TLS encryption can be relatively taxing if you're doing thousands of requests per second. So offloading that TLS to another box can split up your load across more than one server, make everything happier. Then your backend web servers can do backend, your um, layer 7 proxy can do TLS termination, layer 4 proxy can do front end load balancing, you end up with a big chain of load balancers and proxies here. So one last thing, you're probably confused on why we call this a reverse proxy. So essentially a proxy is something that caches or intercepts communications on behalf of someone else. So a normal forward proxy is used by clients. So if a client wants to get out to the internet but doesn't have internet access because they're restricted, they don't have the internet routable address, whatever, their organization doesn't want them to have internet access, they can go possibly through a forward proxy. And a forward proxy will take their request and then send it out to the internet on its behalf. And forward proxies are often used to intercept traffic for logging, um, for inspection if you have aggressive filters, or for caching if you have a bad internet connection or a slow internet connection, you can use a proxy as a way of caching data so that more than one client doesn't have to do the same download. They used to be more common than it is now, but that's what forward proxies do. So reverse proxies do the opposite. They're server side. Many, many clients come in and they're proxying on behalf of a small number of servers. Load balancers are similar. Usually you hear a layer four um, proxy term, a load balancer. Essentially what they're usually doing is they're taking in connections at a rapid rate and firing them out to a bunch of backends so that they can distribute the load of one IP address across a whole bunch of backends without clients noticing. So I decided for my use case, what I wanted to use is a layer four proxy for TCP for my port 443 HTTPS traffic. For port 80 HTTP insecure traffic, I'm gonna use layer seven. Another option is to just have the proxy send a redirect on port 80 that says go to HTTPS. And then it doesn't even proxy anything to the web server on port 80. It just tells the client go back to HTTPS. If you're intending on letting your website be accessed insecurely, um, there's reasons to do that. Or if you want to allow port 80 for HTTP 01 uh, Acme challenges, like for Let's Encrypt, then you'll have to pass HTTP through as well. So over here, I've got three test systems. So server test A, test B, and test C. And they each have a domain name. And I would like to front them all from a single IP address. So I type the domain name, it picks the backend, we're good. So for this video, I've chosen to use HA proxy. HA proxy is a very fast and efficient load balancer. It's very good at layer four stuff. So some other reverse proxies are particularly suited to layer seven. So Caddy and Nginx in particular are very good at layer seven, um, not particularly so at layer four. So that's where we start using HA proxy. So this is probably the easiest software installation ever. We just install it through apt, there's nothing else to do. So to set up HA proxy, let's take a look at what the backend servers are doing now. So we have these three backend servers and they're at least responding to us, but what does their DNS look like? So I ask for an A record, I get, I get nothing. So no error, but also no answer. It's not NX domain, but it doesn't have an A record. So we ask for a quad A and boom, we have a quad A. So server is accessible on v6, but not on v4. This is basically what it looks like on the public internet. If I've got a bunch of web services running in my home lab, I want to expose them to the outside. I have ABC, they're all exposed to the outside over v6, but they don't have a public v4 address to bind to. So that's why HA proxy comes in. So the config file we're going to edit today is Etsy HA proxy, HA proxy .cfg. So you'll notice this file has some defaults in it. We're going to skip down and leave the global defaults for now. They're actually pretty good. So that says it should run as a daemon. It should be a user group, blah, 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 blah. Air files. So now we need to make some front ends and some back ends. So remember how I said before that 
HA proxy or any load balancer is taking a TCP session, finishing it, and then stitching it together with a new one that goes off to the web server. I guess it comes in this way from the client, goes out to the web server. So an HA proxy and a lot of reverse proxies, these are called front ends and back ends. So a front end is a socket that we expose to the client, let the client connect to us. And a back end is a connection we make from the proxy out to the web servers. So we need front ends and back ends. I have some examples on my website for HTTP and HTTPS, and we're gonna follow those. So first thing we could do is just say anything that comes on an HTTP, we're gonna send it to HTTPS. So this is the code for that. So we have a front end called www. It's in layer seven mode, so HTTP. It's binding on port 80, and it basically just says, HTTP request redirect to HTTPS. So that means take the same address and replace it with the HTTPS version and tell the client to go there. So this will tell any client that comes in, no matter what they're looking for, they should be looking for HTTPS. Again, if you need HTTP 01 challenges for Acme or Let's Encrypt, you can't use this approach. If you're using Caddy web server, that can use TLS challenges instead of HTTP challenges, which work on 443, and that is perfectly fine with this approach. So this is the approach I use. Copy that. There we go. So now for layer four. So we need to find a front end, which I've called www.tls. We're gonna set mode to TCP, because we're a layer four TCP proxy, and we're gonna bind on 443. This is TCP 443. Um, we're not proxying quick, although Caddy does support quick. So if you access my website via IPv6, you'll get quick once I'm done setting that up someday. So then we say basically inspect delay five seconds. So that means we allow up to five seconds for the client to send a SSL hello. So if the client doesn't send an SSL hello within five seconds, we just drop them, terminate the session. If they do send a hello, then we use the backend. So this little bit here takes the URL they asked for, which will be something like www.applr.net colon four four three. It strips out the port at the end and looks for a backend with that name with TLS on the end. So in like here, test one .net underscore TLS. This makes it pretty easy to add a bunch of backends that having to add a bunch of use backend directives in the front end. It means you have to name your backends a certain way, but I think that's perfectly fine. So then for each server down here, we basically have mode TCP and we can have more than one server directive. And so with IPv6 in HA proxy, you have to put all the zeros in because they don't put the brackets around it and there's a colon at the end for the 443. So you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets of octets followed by 443. So in this case, I have two servers in my example. We're gonna copy this into our config and then we're gonna edit it. Um, now HA proxy is a load balancer too. So if you add more than one server directive, it'll load balance across the servers. There's some directives you can put for the back end, have as many servers as you want, how to load balance them, what priorities to use for the servers. If you do health checking on the back ends, all that kind of stuff. HA proxy is really good at that. That's not my particular use case in this video, but that is something HA proxy can do. So let's get our addresses. So we're gonna need test A, test B. Yeah. So got all my IPv6 addresses into the HA proxy config. You can put DNS names here, it will resolve them. The reason I'm not doing that is because the DNS names resolve to the V6 address of the server and the V4 address of the proxy. So I don't want the proxy to try to connect to itself. If you have a separate internal addressing scheme in DNS than external, then you can use your internal DNS addresses in HA proxy, that's fine. Um, in my case, I want to point directly to the IP address, so I point directly to the server instead of possibly getting the wrong record. Oh, last but not least, we have to start HA proxy too. So now I can take the IP address of my HA proxy server, or if I'm port forwarding, I can take my public IP address, put that in DNS for all of my different services. So no matter what service someone's trying to go to, they get the IP address of the proxy server, or they get my public address, which port forwards to the proxy server. This looks like I got 10.6. So I did some housekeeping behind the scenes. I went in and I updated the DNS records. So all the A records point to the HA proxy server. I also turned off IPv6 on my desktop here so we can see what it looks like when we connect. So HA proxy started up. It told us we should be using TCP log instead of HTTP log, so I'll fix that in the example. Let's go over here, we'll refresh each one of these. One, two, three. And now it's like a log file again. Oh yeah, that was logs. So we got a request in from this guy at this time. 
Went to test A, did 386 bytes. So we did some more bytes, we did some more bytes, lots of bytes. So we did A, B, and C, and it went through the proxy. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick tip on using HA proxy to front all of your services behind a single IP address. This is what I'm using in my network to front my single IPv4 address in front of all of my different services I'm running on IPv6. Obviously for some applications, layer seven would be more appropriate. Um, I have a video upcoming where I'm gonna set up my website on a new server. Currently I'm using object hosting for that at Linode. I'm gonna move to a actual real virtual private server so that I can set up caddy and stuff how I want it. So that's coming up in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, comment, boost engagement, all that good stuff. Uh, I got a Discord server link down below, fun place to chat with me and my community, some great people there. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys in the next adventure.